Good morning. morning. Welcome to Washington Park, United Church of Christ. I'm Lee Berg, and um, if we were to scan the audience here in the building today, I think there may be almost as many online as there are in the building today. We have a women's retreat going on at Podestas Park, and some of our regular attenders are up there enjoying beautiful Colorado weather as it finally starts to warm up a little bit. Wherever you are, and because of who you are, and where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And let me see. We got folks spread out. I do want to share with you that Beth Roby Hyde has made it back north and is uh, going through what she calls a series of moves and hasn't gotten her laptop up and running, so she sends greetings but wanted to let you know that she wouldn't be online today. To our friends online, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Yes. Northeast. It's the. All right. Thank you. I stand corrected. Hey, I tell you what, that's the first mistake I've, at, I've made in at least the last 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Hey, I'm glad to see you. It's a beautiful day here. We hope wherever you are, uh, you're having a beautiful day. And uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us. Let's, um, let's pause for a moment and just to breathe and uh, to let go of, of uh, what's happening in the world around us, the shooting down of a Chinese balloon and all of those other kinds of things uh, that we can let go of. See, Ken, I told you I'd find a way to work it in. <laughs> let's pause and breathe and open ourselves to the Spirit. For the grace gift of another day of life, for the love of community, for the presence of your spirit, not only in us and in all creation, but in our gathering here in this building and by Zoom with friends near and far. We are grateful for this day. And we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be sources of encouragement for one another, that they'll spark ideas and thoughts uh, not um, experienced before. We pray for those who live in war-torn countries, especially those in Ukraine, we pray for those who walk through uh, deep and dark valleys. We pray for those who face uncertain times. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, I'm Ken Jones, and uh, I will lead you in the call to celebration. Please join me. 
We join with the earth and with each other, with our ancestors and all beings of the future to bring new life to the land, to recreate the human community, to provide, to provide justice, justice and, peace, and peace, to remember our children, to remember who we are. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth and the renewal of all life. I invite you here in the room at least to rise as you're willing and able and join our voices together, our small but mighty group of voices today in the singing of Dream God's Dream. Dream God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. I'm dreaming of a world where the color of one's skin will mean less than what's within the person's heart. A world where water's clean and where air is safe to breathe and every child born has enough to eat. Dream God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. I'm dreaming of the call God is offering to me How to use my energy and my best gifts To you do the work of Christ To say, God, please use my life To spread your healing love And to live your truth Dream God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. I'm dreaming of the way that I want my life to go. I've got hope and I've got goals I'd like to meet. I'm reaching for the stars, but I won't forget the scars of Christ who died to show that the dream's for all. Dream God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. The first reading this morning is for Matthew chapter 5, 
verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your divine parent. Our second reading is from Dr. Vincent Harding, Hope and History, Why We Must Share the Story of the Movement. Who knows? Perhaps religion really is about the fact that all of us, by the very reality of our humanity, are called to serve the poor, to open doors for prisoners, to work on behalf of the exploited, to seek for a new order of sharing, forgiveness, and compassion in this world. If that is the case, then Gandhi is teacher to us all, and religion really cannot be separated from responsible public participation in the shaping of our community politics at its best. Living God, touch our hearts Through these words and through your spirit Kindle our imaginations Breathe your life into our actions As we dream and work to shape your new world What does it mean to be the salt of the earth? What does it mean to be the light of the world? Phrases and passages with which we're familiar. This part of Matthew 5 is a long discourse of Jesus. We sometimes refer to it as the Sermon on the Mount, and this follows the Beatitudes, the blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, etc., And Jesus speaks of salt and light. Now, as things continue to melt and refreeze at night, I came up with a use of salt that has lost its saltiness, and that's throwing it down on the ice, and maybe it'll help get rid of the ice. So maybe uh, there wasn't a whole lot of ice in the Middle East during Jesus' day, or he might have had it different idea. Who knows? Sometimes I've been at funerals where I've heard speakers get up and describe the deceased as he or she was just really the the salt of the earth. Have you all heard that phrase used to describe someone? What do you think it means? What does it mean to be the salt of the earth? My dad was referred to as someone who was the salt of the earth. He wasn't as extroverted as I am by any means. I think I got that from my mother. Uh, What do you think, Tom? I would say what comes across to me with that phrase is somebody great definition. Webster might say that 
someone who is reliable, honest, kind, hardworking. Anybody else? Grounded. Very much so. Essential to life. In fact, consistent in in its flavor. Yeah, now, some of you may be like me and uh, have a history of heart trouble in your family. And how many of us have been told to cut back on our salt? Now think about it. What comes to mind when we say someone is a pretty salty person? Get the contrast? Maybe their, their language is more colorful than is proper for Sunday morning in church. Yes. The essence of life. I like that. In fact, when I go in for my next physical, I'm going to tell my doctor that. And I think he'll probably say to me, it's the essence of ending your life if you get too much. But it's the essence of life. It adds flavor. It adds color. And whether you're a salty person or you're salt of the earth, we might say that both are essential. This is Black History Month. It is, um, for some, it, it, it seems like the media around Black History Month is, um, is extraordinarily focused. And it is an honest and a very good question of why do we focus so much on Black History Month and not as much on Latinx History Month or um, Asian History Month or Indigenous Peoples uh, History. And, and it's, it's a fair and honest question. For, for me, and I realize that this is coming from a, a white, straight male who grew up in privilege, um, I, I wish we would focus on history, history that has a record of how Northern Europeans who came as settlers or as invaders, depending on one's perspective, interacted with indigenous people, how Northern Europeans and others brought uh, men and women and children against their will from Africa to build an economy and to help build this nation. I wish that we would, would take time and, and see that we do not have to be afraid of our children feeling badly about themselves if they're white and they find out about our history, the good, the bad, and the really ugly. Maybe it's because of the recent death of Tyree Nichols or the rejection of the 1619 Project as being useful for study in high schools and, and in other places are the, uh, the attack of any um, reference in, uh, in our school history books to the impact of slavery on those who were slaves and on uh, leading our nation into a war, a civil war, gets attacked as critical race theory and rejected. I don't know. I don't know. And in light of that kind of 
struggle to own our story. Maybe there is an opportunity for us to bring light into that darkness. Some of the resistance to Black History Month and to the study of, of critical race theory or the study of our interactions with one another and throughout the history of this country, we don't want to own what we might call white privilege. And Peter's going to bring up that slide. This is how it's defined in the uh, Smithsonian in the history of African American culture. Since white people in America hold most of the political, institutional, and economic power, they receive advantages that non-white groups do not. These benefits and advantages of varying degrees are known as white privilege. For many white people, this can be hard to hear, understand, or accept. But it is true. If you are white in America, you have benefited from the color of your skin. So what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? In an America where white privilege is woven throughout the institutions and the culture of United States society, and I won't call it American society, because that in itself is a reflection of how whites have come to think of ourselves in the United States as the legitimate Americans. And we're just one part of two continents, one called North America and the other called South America, and we're connected by Central America. And I think last time I checked that everyone who lives in those three areas, we can safely call Americans. Can we not? So maybe being the salt of the earth is reminding ourselves and those who look like we do that yes, we share privileges because we're white Northern Europeans. Oh, and as we've begun to learn, it's not just to be enough to be white Northern Europeans. You cannot be Jewish. Why is that? What was hollered and shouted in Charlottesville in 2017? In the presence of Confederate flags? The Jews shall not replace us. What did we learn about our own history from 1938 through 1945 when thousands of Jews from Europe were trying to immigrate to the United States and what they found when the boats pulled into port in New York and in other ports on the eastern seaboard was, no thank you, you're not welcome. So sometimes even being white can be discounted if you come from the people that we call Jews. Tragic, isn't it? Being the salt of the earth in this kind of day where our, our immigrant policies are still shaded by the not welcome sign that went up in the 19, late 1930s and early 1940s. We extend that to people fleeing 
uh, primarily communist dictatorships in Central and South America, we say, no thank you. Or if you're going to come, you have to go through these hoops to get here and just get in line, and it may take 10 or 15 years, but we'll open a door for you, maybe. Maybe being salt of the earth involves being honest. And it, it calls on us to enter into the debate of the day. Bringing the light that because of who people are and because of where they are on life's journey, they are welcome not only in our churches, but in our country. That would be interesting. There's a lot of darkness that we see, and sometimes we forget there's a lot of good. I read this week of a woman who was walking to work as she normally did, a grandmother whose car needed to be repaired. Over two and a half miles each way, every day, going to work, walking. She came across a bag and she bent down to pick it up to throw it away. And she found nearly $15,000 worth of cash and gift cards, obviously, from a wedding. What would you do? You've got a couple of thousand dollars worth of repairs to do on the car. You've been walking to and from work. You've been giving up attending events of your grandkids because you can't drive there and they don't, the parents, your children don't have time to come and get you. But she didn't keep it for herself. She took it to the police station and said, this is what I found. And because there were gift cards from a wedding, the police were able to find the young couple who had lost the cash. Now, why, how could they lose the cash? Well, they just got married. I think they probably had other things on their mind. Maybe they were trying to get off on their, I mean, go on their honeymoon and, you know, it got mixed up with stuff being thrown away. Who knows? Salt of the earth, we might say of that woman. The police were so astounded by her honesty that they set up a GoFundMe page and raised nearly $25,000 to help get her back on her feet. You see, we can be honest. We can be honest about our past. Our past. We can be honest about our privilege. We can be honest about the struggle that we still have in understanding how to see one another, not because of the color of our skin, but by the content of our character, as Dr. King used to say. What does it mean to be the light of the world? What I like about this passage is that Jesus says, the light is for all who are in the house. Now, if you define the house narrowly as people who look and think and act like we do, and that's kind of a joke here because we have a bunch of individuals here and online, and we have similar values, but we don't all think alike, do we? But we have room in this house for one another and for others who think differently than we do. But I would like to think that the house is not just the, this house of worship. It's not just the country we call the United States of America, but the house is the world in which we all live and have our being. And the light of the world that we have 
is a light not just for our part of the world, but it's for all the world and all who are in it. Dr. Harding writes that we're all called to serve the poor, to open doors for prisoners, to work on behalf of the exploited, to seek for a new order of sharing, forgiveness, and compassion in this world. Maybe those are the good works that people are looking to see. Maybe doing something that every day gives testimony to the larger world of the values that we have and that we share is a better way of reaching people with the good news of God's love than showing up once a week on Sunday and preaching and speaking and singing to and with one another. We dream as we think about next steps, about the possibilities of using space in such a way that every day of the week it's communicating a message consistent with our mission and our values and our hope. And oh, by the way, we use it to gather once a week, but every day it's being used to express our values and our mission. Perhaps as in Missouri, laws are being passed that are inculcating into law one version and view of religious faith, of Christian faith. Part of being the light of the world is speaking up as faith groups and Americans United for the Separation of Church and State are in that state and are saying, look, laws on abortion violate our religious values and our religious beliefs. They're trying to be light in a very tough situation. My daughter and I used to talk about the impact of overturning Roe v. Wade, and I told her, I said, if they overturn Roe v. Wade, then those miscarriages that you experienced in your life, if they happen to others after that's overturned, you're going to wind up being investigated to make sure you didn't do anything to cause the miscarriage. There are laws in Arkansas that are threatening to do that very thing. So part of being light of the world is saying, no, 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 that's not what we believe. That's not what science teaches us. That's not our religious value. If you want to hold a religious view that leads to such laws, hold the view but don't change the laws. In America, where Americans are usually meant, those of us who are white, maybe we can remember as Toni Morrison reminds us. In this country, American means white. Everybody else has to hyphenate. Think about it. We have an opportunity to say that all of us, maybe I'm German American, or English American, since I've got a little more English in me than I do German, thank God. Any Germans among us, I apologize. I am 26% German, but 46% English. And as Cindy constantly reminds me, I'm 3% Neanderthal. So, um, listen, folks, we're trying to figure out next steps, but let me tell you, we live in a world that has enough darkness that our light is critical. Our salt is essential. Our facing the future, demanding and challenging, is required. May we pray. Thank you for the truth as we understand it. Thank you for the insight as it's been given to us. Thank you for allowing us to be a community that 
cares for the poor, that seeks to house the homeless, that seeks to feed those living in food insecurity, that seeks to care for those struggling with health issues, both physical and mental. Thank you for a family where we can be who we are and still be loved and cared for because of who we are. Amen. We haven't sung this for a little while, but I hope you remember or pick up easily enough. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, ooh, ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, ooh, ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are singing, we are singing in the light of God. 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 We are singing. Ooh, we are singing in the light of God. We are singing. Ooh, we are singing in the light of God. We are dancing, we are dancing in the light of God. 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 We are dancing. Ooh, we are dancing in the light of God. We are dancing. Ooh, we are dancing in the light of God. We are marching. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We come now to what we normally would call the offering. Um, we don't pass the plate anymore, but if you have an offering to give and you're here in the building, there's a plate on uh, the table uh, near the narthex. If you're online and wish to contribute, please go to our website and uh, click on the appropriate tab, or you can mail a check to 400 South William Street Denver, Colorado, 80209. If you're struggling to make ends meet and you need help, let us know and we can provide that assistance we trust. And now we're going to have a song of reflection that I think we're all going to sing <laughs> and maybe have been singing it since we were children. This little light of mine I'm going to let it shine. If you feel like standing, stand up. <laughs> yes, you are welcome to join in, and I will cue you with if what you the next words like standing, will be. don't feel like standing, just stay seated. <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of 
light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Everywhere I go Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine This joy I have this joy I have The world didn't give it to me This joy I have The world didn't give to me This joy I have The world didn't give to me The world didn't give it The world can't take it away This love I have this love I have world didn't give it to me This love I have The world didn't give it to me This love I have The world didn't give it to me No, the world didn't give it The world can't take it away this little light of mine, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. May these tangible gifts and all the intangible gifts we share among us make known to the world that God is within us and among us. Amen. And finally, our closing song, Go Make a Difference. You're welcome to stand again if you would like. Or do whatever is most comfortable for you as we close out with this song. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see the love of God for all to see. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but be seen. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the hands of Christ, reaching out to those in need. The face of God for all to see. We are the spirit of hope. We are the voice of peace. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference.
Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Yeah. How about Amy's first time playing through that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's uh, this, this week anyway. Let's take a moment for our benediction and then uh, those of you in the building, please join us. We do have refreshments and coffee and the company you just can't beat, so please join us. We've come together in the spirit of God, in the spirit of holiness, in the spirit of grace, in the spirit of light. As we leave from this time in worship together, May we do so in the strength of the Creator, in the love of Christ, and in the hope of the Spirit's guidance today and throughout the week. Amen.